Okay, welcome to the Wildlife Safari Event Coach Workshop. I am going to turn the floor over to Mr. Ogden. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, hopefully today we'll uh, cover the important details of the Wildlife Safari event, and we'll also get your questions answered. Uh, I am not the event supervisor, so let me. We'll start with the uh, the important information first. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, our supervisors couldn't be available uh, to us today, but I think we'll still be able to get your uh, questions answered. So we're going to talk a little bit about the rules. I'll um, give you some advice about um, a, a little bit of advice about coaching, uh, and we'll cover some of the the, the questions that uh, coaches have asked in the past. Um, and and I'll uh, walk through those. And as as we're doing it, if you think of questions please put them into the chat um, and we'll get those answered. So uh, hopefully you've had an opportunity to go to our website before. I'm gonna share the page from that from our, um, our website. Let me see here. If you haven't uh, been to it before, it's macombso.org. Uh, and what you see, this is uh, with the red background uh, on the edge of the page, I can tell I'm, that I'm in the elementary section, and there are um, there's an event and rules uh, menu item down the left hand side, and within that I can find uh, the web page for Wildlife Safari, right? Uh, and if you follow that link down, eventually eventually you'll be able to find the rules. If you haven't seen the rules, this would be a good great place to start. Uh, my advice to you is, you know, read the rules now, start working with your students. Every so often, like once a month, you ought to be going back and, and uh, looking at the rules just to sort of remind yourself of what they say. So this is a uh, the wildlife safari event is an event where the, the topic rotates every year. And um, this particular year, we're studying fish. And uh, there's a field guide, which is a, a primary source of information that you'll be able to use for you know, the, the, the content, the material that your students will be learning about. Um, in competition, this is a station-based event. A station-based event means that um, your, your two students will move from uh, a station which has questions and a, a photo, likely a photograph and several questions on it. Uh, they'll be given about a minute at that station, and when time is up, they will be expected to then walk to another close station next and repeat the process. And there's typically about 20 stations in in the room, uh, and so it's a sequence where they're under they're under a time pressure, uh, where they have a limited amount of time to uh, be able to answer those questions. It's great if they one are you know, you can tell when teams have studied and they're and uh, it would be great for them to already be able to answer some of the questions that are on that on uh, for that particular uh, species that's being shown in the photograph. Um, however, they also have the ability to bring with them uh, into the tournament two resources, two field guides, essentially per team. And uh, so we'll talk in more details about what the constraints are uh, around those particular field guides. Um, and so a, a successful team is one that is not only able to, uh, on some reasonable occasion, just be able, just you be able to look at the question, and say, "Oh, I recognize that's a blue guild, whatever." I'm not a fish person. <laughs> Warning, um, and maybe even so know something about it already and be able to start uh, you know, thinking about what the right answers to the, to the questions are. Also, they're going to want to be very uh, facile with, with their resources, right? They're, if, if they do need to look something up, they need to be able to do it very promptly and, and very efficiently. Um, a, a team that has to look everything up in the tournament isn't going to do well just because the time limits is, is relatively uh, close and there's enough questions. There's about three to five questions on each of those stations and they won't have time to look all of them up. There'll be a range of difficulty 
I would expect uh, of those various questions, we'd like to, you know, you'd like your team to be able to answer some of those easy ones without looking them up. Um, they're going to be, uh, it's a multiple choice test uh, with the exception of the, of the tiebreaker. And so they're going to, you're going to want, uh, or one of the students will be carrying the zip grade form, which is the, you know, fill in the bubble to, to provide your answer. And you're going to want to uh, make sure that before your team comes in, you've already figured out the logistics of who's doing what. Uh, you know, one, one student should have the pencil and the, and the, uh, uh, the zip grade form and be responsible and have practiced filling that zip grade form in. Um, if I was the event coach in this particular one, uh, after having figured, you know, assessing the the strengths and weaknesses of the the two members of my team, I would <clears throat> make my student who is the stronger of the two in terms of the content the person without the pencil. I I, I want the person who's uh, who's the strongest on the content to be the one who's focused on answering the questions, not distracted by the process of recording the answers. Just a piece of that piece of advice after having uh, coached um, Science Olympiad teams for many years. Uh, anyways, so uh, the teams will have 30 minutes um, to do the entire circuit of, of stations. There's a little bit of time at the beginning and the end of that 30 minutes that's lost to logistics and getting things set. Uh, and so it's approximately a minute per station is what you can expect that the students will have. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a, uh, an event where it's relatively easy to uh, to practice with your students uh, in advance. So let me comment just another uh, piece of advice that I typically I give to to event coaches, uh, regardless of their event. Um, early in the season, as you're practicing and, and learning material, um, it's much more you're, you should be much more focused on whether the students are understanding the material and absorbing it and 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 doing it in a way where you you can tell whether the individual students are learning the material as you get closer to competition time and I'll uh, so uh, as you get closer to competition time you need to have more focus on whether the students know how to behave as a team and how to be efficient and 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 effective as a as a pair of students right so Early in the season, if I'm after having introduced material to them, we've studied stuff. If I want to give them a quiz um, to um, find out how well they're doing early in the season, I would give them each their own copy of the quiz because I want to know how both Billy and Julie are doing. I'd like to know if they're if they're getting it. And I want to know where their strengths and weaknesses are so I can help them with that. Right. When we get closer to tournament, if I were to give them a a, a practice quiz, uh, I would want I would ask them to do it together and start practicing the behaviors of of a, of a team, and eventually I would start introducing the idea of time that they're under they're under a time constraint as well, right? So you can see that that process of coaching your students get as you get closer, you can build their skills and get them better prepared for the pressure that they're going to feel and the constraints that they're going to be under when they're actually at the tournament. OK, um, so the, most of the test, all, with the exception of one station out of the 20, will be multiple choice questions. Uh, there could be true and false uh, as well. Uh, and points are, are um, associated um, with them based on the difficulty of those individual questions. Um, once one uh, of the stations will be the tiebreaker station, and that will have a more difficult question if, if for no other reason than the format. It's going to be a uh, you know free response, you know fill in the blank type of type of question where they they're not prompted with a potential answer. They're going to have to know what the answer is. Uh, it's not uh, it's not sensitive to spelling. Uh, we don't grade the kids on spelling, so as long as they've answered something that we can read. Um, you know, so penmanship is worth a little bit. So again, thinking about the skills of your students, uh, if one of your students has dramatically better penmanship than the other one, uh, that would be, a, a, again, a good role to to define uh, before you get into the into the. Uh, you know, the competition room 
to as to who it is that's going to write their answer on on the uh, the fill in the blank part. Typically, we have the zip grade form on one side of a sheet, and if they flip it over, uh, I believe it's on the back. Then, if I recall our printing process properly, uh, you know, flipping it over, there's uh, the space for that free response question, uh, and so it's all on one sheet of paper uh, when when that information gets to the scoring room. Okay. So that was sort of the, the fire hose of what goes on in this event. Um, I want to step back to this question of uh, the, um, the field guides, because that's a key resource uh, for this event. So the, the simple answer is that, as you can see down in the, in the, uh, in the rules here that I'm uh, showing on the screen, is that we have the Fish of Michigan Field Guide written by Dave Bosanko. Um, and this is a this is a um, field guide that's been around for a long time. Its publication date is 2007, and I just learned today um, that they have announced the release of the replacement publication for this book. And of course, it's uh, like three weeks after our tournament. Well, I, I, it could be worse. It could be before. Um, however, um, I also. Um, from the question of where do I get this field guide, if you if your team doesn't already have one, um, you're going to want to you you may want to buy one or two of these, right? Your team's allowed to bring up to two of these field guides in with them. The um, I was just looking online to check on availability. I noticed that some of the traditional places that I would recommend to people for getting this field guide are showing them out of um, out of stock or backward. And I'm assuming that's related to the fact that the uh, this book is um, uh, now almost replaced. So they've essentially stopped publishing this this particular uh, version of the field guide, uh, anticipating uh, its replacement in in June of this year. So if there are still copies out there, um, you might be forced to purchase a used one. You might find a really nice used one and save a little bit of money. Uh, if your team is having difficulty finding uh, these field guides, please contact the, uh, me. I'm the tournament director, uh, and let me know that this is a problem that you're having. Um, uh, we'd like to know about it sooner than later. So please uh, get the, you know figure out if you're going to get one of these or two of these, uh, and get them soon. Uh, it's possible I may be able to connect you, if you're having trouble, I may be able to connect you with a team that already has a copy of this publication, a, a team that decided not to register for this season because of COVID, um, and we may be able to uh, to find uh, some field guides that way if, if teams are having trouble. Um, and I would like to know if this is a problem so that we can address it. So again, I would appreciate your help on that for uh, giving us feedback if, in fact, you're having trouble locating the field guide. In fact, I looked not just looked online um, a little bit ago, and I saw uh, here's a couple of these sources that are used sources, used on eBay, some of these things. Uh, I went to Walmart, and sure enough, they had no in, none in stock. Uh, I believe Barnes & Noble actually did have some. Uh, when I looked at Amazon, they didn't have any. So, um, it's a it's a real uh, question about whether that um, will be available. All right, so let's talk about some of the details about um, let's see about the field guide. Um, if you have questions along the way, you're welcome to ask them, and uh, Nicole will help us uh, get those qu questions asked and, and get my attention. Uh, so. You're allowed to bring in two of these field guides. Um, they don't have to be a purchased document. Your students are allowed to create their own field guide. So the constraints are that it, whatever they bring in, things need to be bound. So when I say bound, meaning there can't be loose pages, right? So we don't want to see them carrying a stack of loose page, pages into the tournament. So they, if a student could create their own field guide by uh, having them in a binder. Right, you know, three ring binder kind of a situation, or there might be other ways you uh, want to want to bind that information. 
Uh, the process of creating your own field guide could be a great learning experience. And uh, and so I, if I was a, a wildlife safari coach, I would seriously uh, consider doing that. Um, there's a number of other questions that people have asked. And so I'm gonna change what I'm, uh, the document I'm sharing here uh, in the chat, because I went, a lot of the questions that have been asked in previous years um, relate to uh, what is allowed uh, with this, with the field guide. Uh, let's see, oh, I just went back to what I was doing. It's not presenting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this question right here. Uh, so you can bring two of these per team. Uh, if your team is one student, you can still bring two. Now I'm not sure that's a great idea because, uh, in fact, there should be no one-person teams in this event. And let me explain why. One is because uh, this is a timed event. It's it's challenging. It's set up to be challenging for two students, not just one. So even if your student can't find a partner who wants to be on this event, you should be asking your head coach to assign them a helper. And but what I mean by a helper is someone who's willing to be the person with the zip grade form who knows how to fill in bubbles so that your student can be the content expert, right? So we, you shouldn't you shouldn't have only you shouldn't have only one student coming into this event. That's not a great situation under any circumstance. So that's my advice. Uh, so you can bring two of these field guides per team. You could, it could be two of that uh, that that uh, pre-published one that I already showed you. It could be one of each, or you could have two field guides that your team created. Uh, any combination. It could your team could decide they're only going to have one field guide, and it's going to be the greatest field guide that's ever been created. Right. I think that's where the, the direction I would go. But um, no loose pages. Uh, the things that are in a student created field guide can be any, pretty much anything you want. It doesn't matter if you bought a field guide, you could take the Dave uh, Bonsanto field guide and cut it up and put it into your own field guide. Uh, you can take that purchase field guide, you can put tabs on it, you can label the tabs, you can, uh, if one team had asked about, could we put our own index into the that, that purchase field guide? As long as it's attached in a way that it's not loose pages, that's quite fine. Uh, there is, uh, you know, we've been asked before, is there a size limit to the to the um, field guide? And I wish I'd, I'd thought about this before just this moment. Um, I'm thinking back to the, uh, actually the state tournament for the high school or for the junior high and high school teams, and, and uh, which takes place on the Michigan State campus. And watching a student carry their notebook for a particular event, I don't know what it was, but it was a high school student and this young lady was having trouble carrying it. It was so big. It might've been like a four inch wide binder. And so I always have that image in my head when I'm, when people are asking this question about, well, how big can it be? And um, that's way too big. <laughs> Long before you get to four inches, it wants, you want something that the students are good at using and, and have used a lot so that they're quick with it and it's easy to use. So, um, all right, a couple other questions specifically that had been asked in the past that are uh, already posted in our FAQ, but I'll bring them to your attention. Um, the tiebreaker questions are not specifically about any one particular subject, uh, but they are more challenging questions. Um, so there's no particular uh, topic that you should be studying for, for that purpose. Um, and uh, students are not required to know the scientific names of animals. Um, just the common names are what are, are, are appropriate. So with that, uh, I think that's the material that I had prepared uh, in advance to uh, share with you today. And so I'll go back and uh, if there are questions that you have, um, I'm happy to try to answer them. Currently, there are no questions asked in the chat. So um, whoever wants to feel free and just speak up, you may at any time.
if there are any uh, veteran uh, event coaches in this group and you feel so generous as you'd like to make a great suggestion to, to help out uh, rookie event coaches, um, we're happy to get that advice as well. Okay, so um, I'll say don't forget that we have an FAQ system on our website it, where it's not functional today, but I'm hopeful it will be very soon. At least I don't think it is functional today. Um, we'll, we'll be getting that started back up. And so if you have uh, additional questions that you want to ask, um, we when you submit that question, the question goes to our event supervisor, and then we will post uh, both the question and the answer that the supervisor provided uh, to our website. And that way, um, all of event coaches are, are able to see the same information. You know, nobody's getting an advantage because a question got asked. Uh, and so even if you don't have a question to ask, uh, it's good, ad, good practice for you to go to our website and occasionally take a peek at what's in the FAQs just to see if somebody else has asked a good question that maybe you didn't think to ask. All right, if, uh, if there aren't any questions, um, I'll take that as a pat on the back that we asked, we answered all the questions in advance and um, we'll look forward to seeing you guys at the tournament. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Ogden. We appreciate you. Oh, is there a question coming? Nope, I was just gonna say thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, I'm going to stop recording.